So I got this question that says, I have a new price list, a new, new cost list from a specific vendor, and I wanna update my QuickBooks Premiere uh, in batch so all my existing items have this new cost structure. So simple question, bit of a nuanced answer. Let's get right into it. So I got QuickBooks Desktop open. I'm working with QuickBooks Enterprise at the moment, but this will also work with QuickBooks Pro or QuickBooks Premiere or QuickBooks Accountant. As long as it's a desktop version, this will work just fine. For some context, I opened up my item list. I noticed I have a whole bunch of items loaded into my QuickBooks desktop file. If I double click on any of these items, uh, each of them is gonna have a cost of some sort. So the premise of the question is, you know, there's a spreadsheet that contains all the part numbers that match my QuickBooks part numbers. That's really important. If the part numbers don't match, it's impossible to make this happen. But assume, assuming your spreadsheet contains uh, the list of items that match your QuickBooks item list, and then maybe some a new updated price that I wanna uh, update into QuickBooks, that's actually uh, very doable. So what we do is we're gonna export our complete item list uh, from QuickBooks Desktop into something called an IIF file. So I'm gonna click on the File menu and then go to Utilities, and then I'm gonna to go to Export, List to IIF File. So File, Utilities, Export, List to IIF File. I'm gonna click on that, and then it's gonna ask me which list would you like to export. So I'm gonna pick only my item list, is the only thing I need to export, and then click OK. And then I'm just gonna call this one Item List and Today's Date. Okay, something that makes it easier to, to find. I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. That will take a minute or so, depending on how big the item list is. And it'll export into this thing called an IIF file. Let me minimize QuickBooks. And then I wanna make Excel a little bit smaller. So basically I want Excel not to be maximized. And I can have a file open or I can have a blank file open. It doesn't matter. Then I wanna find this file I exported into a QuickBooks called item list .iif. Your computer might not have the .iif depending on how your Windows configuration is set up, but just make sure that you have a unique name that you're able to identify it. And then you're gonna click and drag that into Excel. So you click and drag it into whatever existing Excel you have. Take the item, click and drag into Excel, and Excel's gonna open a new uh, spreadsheet, let's call it that. And this is the IAF file, uh, sort of the guts of the IAF file. So you can see a whole bunch of things in there until you get to the item uh, name, right? So I'm gonna maximize this. And then notice that in the second column, column B, uh, or somewhere in like row 20, uh, you see the ending of the stuff that's in the top, which we don't care about. And then this new one starts called IMV item name, ref number, bunch of stuff. Some of it makes sense, some of it doesn't. But long story short, you can tell right here, there's my uh, item name. So what I wanna do is I wanna bring in that price list into the same uh, type of spreadsheet. So I'm gonna bring in my other price list, open it. Okay, there it is. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna grab this uh, tab and I'm gonna bring the entire thing or the sheet into the open IAF file that I have. So I'm gonna click and drag that here to the open IAF file. So basically I'm creating an entirely different table with uh, the new price table, new price sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the column that I don't need because I'm just gonna keep the data that I need, delete that, keep my column with the new 2020 price, which is what I wanna update. And then uh, I wanna just make sure I have a simple two column. I got my part numbers on the left. The very first column needs to be the part number and the second column is gonna be this. Now this will work for any field. I can update preferred vendor, I can update description, I can update sales price, I can update really anything. Uh, that I want, but right now I only want to bring in the new cost. Okay, good. So then I can click anywhere here, click on Control A, so my entire uh, data table gets selected, and then I'm gonna come up here to the empty uh, box in the top left, and I'm gonna give this a name. So I'm gonna call it New Price List. So basically just type the name there and press Enter. And what that does essentially is that that creates a new, let's call it variable, that uh, Excel will know to do a VLOOKUP and to be able to uh, find the solution or the answer that it is looking for in there. So I'm gonna click here where it says item list. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in somewhere to the right 
once all the data is done and I'm going to update this uh, new cost. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to update this cost, but instead of doing it right there, because I am not hundred percent sure if all the data points are there, I'm only technically going to change uh, anything that has a new data point. Okay. To illustrate that point, I'm going to go ahead and just delete most of these, right? So, um, because it's actually the entire list. So I'm going to delete it. So I only have about 200 items that are being updated with prices. And then my real QuickBooks item list has come down here at the bottom. It's about 700 over 700. So not all my items will get price changes. So that's a point I want to make here. So let me make sure that my table still has a name. Perfect. And then I'm going to come down here, scroll all the way to the right, up to the point that I don't have any more data. I think uh, I found it. Let me just double check here. Okay, so this right here, AT was the last column with data. So I'm gonna come up here in the new, sort of a new blank column, and I'm just gonna put here new cost. So this is where I wanna start bringing in the new cost. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a VLOOKUP. I'm gonna do equals VLOOKUP. Okay, the E is extra, I don't need it, be lookup, open parentheses, lookup value, what I'm looking for, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and look for the item name. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm gonna look up uh, the item name. And then the next piece of information is what's the table array? So this is where I'm gonna type new price list. So that's a new table that we created. We named the other table. And then it says, uh, I got that, so I'm gonna click on comma. Then it says column index or from which column would you like to pick up the information? So I'm going to pick it from the second column because that's where the cost is. So I'm going to put two in there. And then on the range lookup, I don't have time to explain that. Search YouTube for VLOOKUP and what all that stuff means. I'm just going to type here false, close parentheses. So that's a formula here. VLOOKUP the item name in my new price list, second column false. That's all I need. Press enter. And there it is, right? There's an error because that one is not being updated. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that uh, that field that we just did and then drag it down to see if some of these are gonna be updated. So I'm gonna scroll down and notice that some of them have updates and some of them just say an A. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new uh, sort of a new wrench to this formula. I'm gonna come in here and do if error so, so what I'm doing is I'm typing, if there's an error on the VLOOKUP, okay, so if there's an error on the VLOOKUP, then press comma, and then the value of error is gonna be the original cost. So I'm gonna scroll down here and find the original cost, which is right here, and then I'm gonna close the parentheses. So what I'm saying is, do the VLOOKUP, but instead of giving it, give me an error, just give me the old cost, because I'm not gonna update it, because that's not in my updated price list. So I'm gonna press Enter, and then notice that all these ones that have NA are not gonna fix themselves. So I'm gonna double click on that little box that's there so it updates. And notice that all the ones that have uh, that have an old price will stay with an old price and all the ones that have a new price will be updated. Let's just double check this one. The new price is 279 and let's see what the old price is. And the old price is 256. So that's looks like it's working perfectly. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this, uh, all these new costs, I'm gonna make sure that I select these correctly, select the one all the way in the top, scroll all the way to the bottom here, okay, and then I'm going to copy and paste value. So right click, copy, and then I'm gonna come down to the new cost, updated cost, so this is where my original box is, I'm gonna right click on the first one and then I'm gonna click on paste values. So paste values. So that should update all my new costs. And now at this point, I'm gonna just make sure there's no overlapping data, beautiful. Then at this point, I can now delete that other column because that other column doesn't have any value. So I'm gonna click on delete. So what I effectively did was export my item list, uh, do a VLOOKUP to find out what the new cost is if error, kept the old cost, copy and paste values onto the IAF file. And then at this point, I just click on file and I do, do a straight save, not a save as, a straight save. And then Excel will know to save it back into the IAF file. 
So I'm gonna close that and then click Don't Save, close uh, any other spreadsheets that I have. And I'll notice that my new IIF file is now going to be containing my new uh, cost structure. So just to double check that, I'm gonna go back into QuickBooks here. I'm gonna pick one of the items that had a cost change. I'm gonna right click on it and click on edit. And this is the one that's gonna have a cost change. So the old cost is 2016. Once I'm done importing, I'm gonna expect to see a different number there. I don't know what it is, we'll see. So I'm gonna hit cancel and it's that last item on the list there. So I'm gonna go to file, utilities, import, import this time, IIF. And then I'm gonna click okay to that. And then it says, import your file. You sure you wanna do import? Do you wanna use the old one called import for me I fix later? I don't have time to explain what that is. Let's just do the regular one, that should work. So I'm gonna click on import, and then it's gonna ask me, where's the IAF file? So I'm gonna click on desktop, and then there it is, there's my item list. I just made changes to it. Take a look at the last modified, make sure it's something that you recently changed to make sure it is something that you updated. Then I'm gonna go ahead and click on open, and then we're gonna give it a chance. It might take a minute, it might take 10 minutes, depending how big your item list is. Perfect, so at the end of the import, you're gonna see there if there's any failures, any successes. Let's hit done and let's go back into the item list and see what's there. So we'll click on list, item list, and we're gonna go see the last item, uh, right click on it and click edit and see if the cost changed and effectively it did. Now I have a new updated cost. So what about updating the sales price? Several ways to go about it. If you're working with QuickBooks Enterprise, you can just click here on edit markup, set up a new markup. Let's say that my markup is gonna be 100%. Then I'll hit tab and it'll calculate my new sales price or I can work off margin. Let's say my margin is 40%, change it in there, hit tab and it'll update the sales price. If you don't have QuickBooks Enterprise where you can do the markup and the margin, my suggestion is to go back into the Excel, do the updates there from the new cost, uh, copy and paste, overriding in the IAF file. Then when you import it, you bring it in with a new sales price as well. So the IAF file actually works for bringing any updates. I can update the accounts, the preferred vendor, the minimum and maximum, actually only the minimum and the uh, description. So I can bring in all that stuff with IAF. So it's not unlimited things I can do with IAF, but particularly price and cost can be updated uh, fairly simple. So Hope the video was helpful and I would love to know what you think. If you're having issues, importing items into QuickBooks, updating costs, uh, fixing your inventory as a whole, uh, that's our area of expertise. So just email me if you have any questions and you might need to hire an expert if you have a lot of items to update or change in batch. Uh, hit like, subscribe to the channel, add some comments below. What else around inventory items, inventory management would you like to see?